the Hitting Home with Mike and Arif. And Arif, I want to talk to you a little bit about something you and I both read earlier this year. It was in the papers for a while, it was in the news. And that was that Barrie, Ontario had established itself as having the highest rental rates of any municipality in the country. And that ran for a short time. And then I think Toronto surpassed us again, but we're kind of running neck and neck still with the GTA for high rental rates. Um, The other thing that coincides with that by no coincidence is the fact that we have one of, if not the lowest uh, rental accommodation rate or vacancy rate in the country as well. This is hard to believe, would you not think for a city our size? No, you know what, Mike? I I don't I don't think it's hard to believe, and uh, I'll, I'll throw in my three and a half cents worth. <clears throat> when you look at things, we're less than an hour uh, to Toronto if you're driving. Yes, we're a little bit longer if you're on the go train, perhaps, but we're a short commute. Uh, you know, by all standards, to the GTA if you're a commuter. Throw into that. COVID, where uh, a huge percentage of the population was able to relatively simply transition to working from home, compound that with the fact that the city of Barrie has the absolute lowest crime rate in the country Mm -hmm. yet again. So very low crime stats, uh, certainly for any of the more uh, um, concerning levels of crime. Yes, we, we, we know, we all know, we all talk about some of the things that disturb us and inconvenience us. And, and I'm one of those people as well. Um, however, we've got a, we've got a beautiful city on a beautiful waterfront in close proximity. We've got the bandwidth, um, you know, we, we've got more house for the dollar, so to speak, uh, comparatively than the GTA. So no, Mike, all of these things actually seem to make sense. Of course, the, uh, the, the nail in the coffin, so to speak, is supply. You know, yeah, we've been, for, we've been talking sure. about and, that for and, a number and, of years, Mike, and I think that's what the show's about. Exactly. We have talked about that for the last four years. And yes, Barry is a magnet. It attracts people near and far of all income brackets. I mean, we have a lot of good social services in this town. We there, There's no shame in uh, um, stating that fact that uh, if you are someone who's in need and you're living anywhere in or around Simcoe County, Barry is the place you're likely to be coming for at least some of those services. We've done a good job with that. And the other side of that is you get a lot of people coming here who are, you know, who need affordable housing. And we just don't have A, the affordable housing supply, but B, just the overall rental supply in all uh, price ranges. And, you know, the question comes up, are we doing all that needs to be done as a municipality, maybe provincially, federally and municipally to ensure that that housing stock catches up with the demand that's there. Um, we've talked answer, on this. For me, Mike, I, I, I think the answer is no. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I think the answer is, is, is a resounding no. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to steal any thunder from what you've got lined up for the show, and I think we're on the same no. page, but I, I would certainly say that there's been uh, a lot of talk and a lot of posturing. Uh, it took long enough for, for local government, both provincially and municipally, to actually tune into this station and actually realize that uh, you can try and dance around the elephant in the room all you want, but at some point the elephant's going to make itself known. And that is squish you. you. Yeah, it's going to squish you. I mean, we haven't had a significant housing boom in this city uh, since probably 2006. And then suddenly, suddenly in the last couple of years, we started to see some increasing inventory, some increasing supply. But if you are in conversation with any of the developers in the community, in the development community, and I'm not interested in personal opinions, I'm just talking about facts, about the the those who are in the business of creating a living space or uh, living communities they all say that this city is slow to uh move things through the process to allow supply to hit the market and the, and the process itself is slow it can be five years to ten years uh, to get shovels in the ground on a development and oftentimes that uh is going to have people turn away turn away they end up passing their properties on to another developer to take on the challenges oh, and it keeps a lot times. of people out sure. of the game some people just don't have that timeline to work with and if if we had a system that allowed uh, a one to three year uh, process where you checked all the same boxes but you could do it in a more efficient manner uh, i have a feeling there'd be a lot more p- 
people interested in investing in new home development uh, in our yeah i, I want to be i want to be i want to be fair to the city though i mean you've got the uh, the two conservation authorities that don't speak to each other and they're certainly yeah. not unified in their uh, approach. They're not unified in their policy. They're not unified in their pricing. Uh, amazing when you watch what's going on in some of the areas that you wonder where they invented their fees and levies, et cetera, uh, because yeah. they're certainly not out of a manual or a, out of a playbook. It seems to be whatever they feel like doing. So, yes. and yes, I'm being critical, but I'm also being someone who's been actively involved sure. and seen the other side of the, uh, uh, you know, the other side of the, the equation. But, but- all those services, you speak of them as separate entities and one hand doesn't know what the other's doing. They do all have one very significant thing in common. They all work for us. They are all subsidized by us. They all exist to serve us. So we, us, need to do something better to get them harmonized, get them working more efficiently together. And until we do, we'll just see the same old, same old, I think. And yeah, something Mike, else I, I mean, wanted to touch here's on. the thing, though. Hang on. The, the thing is, uh, on that point, we're going to go to break in just a second. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I mean, yes, I agree. They all definitely serve us. Um, however, if you look at their mandates, I mean, they do they do claim to be stewards of the environment, for example. Mm-hmm. And, right. I, and I'm not going to I'm not going to diminish that. I mean, we, we certainly have um, uh, have to come to face the reality of climate change. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad we're not talking about global warming uh, as much as we are climate change. And we have seen some severe flooding and ponding and and uh, weather events that uh, that certainly should should cause people to pay attention. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what I'm talking about is the inefficiencies and the almost <laughs> seemingly in, in an intentional uh, delay. And when I when we yeah. come back from break, Mike, let's go let's go to break. I know you've got something on your mind that you want to talk about, but let's ap- let's actually talk about the the reality of the fact that you're either here to address the concern of affordability, which is directly tied to supply, and let's not talk about anything else, okay? Mm-hmm. Because the reality is, is that you can come up with all sorts of reasons why not to do something. You got to decide yep. at some point that you want to do something. So we do have to go to break, Mike. The floor will be yours when we're when, when we're back. I think this is a good topic to have some good back and forth on. Stay with us for more of Hitting Home with Mike and Arf on Rogers TV Bay We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and Arf on Rogers TV Barry. And we're talking about a hot topic. We're talking about housing affordability, a lack of affordable housing, and a lack of affordable rental housing. And all of it, regardless of which side of that equation you're on, comes down to a lack of supply. And before we went to the break, Mike, we were talking about a number of things that uh, sort of catch our catch our attention and, and mm-hmm. offer us a little bit of opportunity to be dismayed. But it comes down to what, Mike? What is that other thing that you well, uh, you wanted to get in there? There's uh, what's commonly referred to as nimbyism. There's two things I want to address within that. And one is, yes, we are seeing uh, projects that do go forward. There, There is development. I don't want the public to think Barry shut its doors and nothing's getting built. It is, but it's it's a, a hare and a tortoise type of race, or maybe that's the wrong analogy there. It's just, it's not happening fast enough. It is a tortoise and uh, in comparison to the demand. So when we see that new development and it's announced and it's posted to social media, the news story, the comments almost every, if not every time uh, are predominantly people saying, well, this is not affordable housing. Um, and I think people need to understand that if you build the housing for the people who can afford that um, mid to upper price range, um, there a lot of them are going to be moving from the rental market into the ownership market. That frees up rental accommodation. That helps keep rental prices in check. So even though it may not directly serve that renter who has a budget, um, the more housing being built is in an indirect way going to attribute to a uh, uh, more supply in a better uh, rental market. The other thing I want to talk about there is, uh, and I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here, if you'll allow me, Arif, and that is anybody who's owned a home in the Barrie area for five years or more has 
seen their, you know, not their net worth, but at least their their uh, assets, home assets increase in value by two, three, four, a hundred thousand, even more. They're 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 sitting well with, with with their investment in their home that they bought five or more years ago. And many of these very same people are the ones that are saying <clears throat> when there's a proposal for, for uh, multi-unit uh, townhouses or two, three story uh, building in their neighborhood on their street, they're the first ones to line up at city hall, put in a deposition and say, we're going to hell in a handbasket. We can't have this. This is not why I moved here. This will not stand. And I'm, I'm sick and tired of hearing that because they're the very people who have benefited from the housing crisis we have. Um, the renters haven't benefited. They've suffered. Uh, anybody who doesn't own a home, who hopes to own a home, has suffered. Seniors are suffering. Uh, students are suffering. They have benefited. So you know what? It's time for you to pay a little bit towards what you've earned here. You're going to have to give a little bit back. And I'm tired of seeing our city council, not all of them, but many of them kowtow, to their whining and complaining and too often um, projects get overturned or they get they, they, they end up being something completely different than what they were intended to be if only to placate these NIMBYs and as long as we keep answering to them and as long as counselors are more bent on 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 saving that those few votes from those people than they are on looking at the bigger problem and crisis here then it's not going to get solved and that's the rant. I was going to give you 21 seconds of pause, but uh, somebody beat me to that uh, not so long ago, and uh, it seemed like I, I, I it would seem like I lost my script. I think that was yeah. a great rant, Mike. Uh, welcome to ranting. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Get it off your chest. Uh, you're in the you're in the industry. You see what's going on. You work with first time home buyers. You work with uh, people who are uh, uh, going through maybe marital separation. You work with seniors. I know you work with uh, quite an extensive portfolio of, of clients or potential clients. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think I think you said what a lot of other people think. Um, my only my only offer to uh, my uh, friends at council and our friends there. Uh, is don't forget it's also about the people who are not sitting in the audience with a sign or um, a yeah. deputation to make. It's, it's, it's also the, the rest of the people who yeah. are putting their faith and confidence in you. Uh, and, you know, th there, is, there is a reality to that, Mike. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, there, there used to be the story that I've driven up the 400 and now I want to close the 400. I want to shut the I want to shut Barry off from anybody else thinking about moving to this area. Well, now that I'm here, yeah. Yeah. And so the, to the question of affordability, I mean, that's an, always been an interesting one. There's there's a textbook definition of what is affordable housing when it comes to funding models, when it comes to um, incentives from yeah. uh, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation or the government in general. And, and that that is the that is a very old and outdated version of affordability. Um, but the reality is, is that if you make the inventory, uh, the price will uh, sort of be the pressure will soften, the pressure will lessen. For those people, and, and I want to get into second suites, but I think we'll save that for the next uh, uh, the next segment when we come back after the break in a couple of minutes. So let's leave that one alone. Mm -hmm. But affordability in general, I mean, I don't begrudge anybody who can uh, afford a home who's got an income. I, I'm going to come to it from the other side. You talked about nimbyism, and I'm just going to put a big rubber stamp of ditto on that. I agree with you on virtually everything you said. And it's the same few people who um, don't seem to tire of that same sort of script that they bring to council. At the end of the day, you either care or you don't about housing affordability. At the end of the day, you either care about your fellow neighbor or potential neighbor and the issue of the next generation of people being able to oh. afford a home or you don't. And you can't have it both ways. You can't live in the exclusive no. enclave or the estates of and have affordable housing. So, you know, at the end of the day, we either want to address the issue or we don't. And that comes down to supply. Now, that being said, Mike, you've heard me say it before. I will absolutely say it again unapologetically. Home ownership is not a right. Access to no. safe and affordable housing should be a right. And that's why yeah. we live in Canada and we don't live in some other uh, uh, states or nations. So mm -hmm. I, I think that we need to be careful about blending the two of affordable of well, housing they get affordability. Overlap. Yeah, but they're two separate things. Yeah. So if you if you want to own a home and the market is tough, 
uh, and challenging, then it's up to you, yourself or me, myself to do what it takes to own a home, mm -hmm. recognizing that, of course, everybody's got their story or their challenges, and maybe you need to tap into the system. So be it. But yeah. uh, anyway, that's my rant, Mike. Uh, yeah. You know, you covered the other one, and, and I wanted to cover responsibility versus rights, yep. as you and like to bring up often. Just, just, you know, just just for perspective, I mean, yeah, property values have gone on, uh, gone up. Uh, qualifying to purchase uh, is tougher. So it, the bar keeps getting raised. So more and more people are on the lower side of that bar or forced to choose rental accommodation uh, or stay much longer than they had anticipated within the rental market. And yeah. that drives prices. And we've seen in the last five years, as I mentioned, you know, that what, what their earnings have been for the average homeowner in Barrie. At the same time, the average rental rate for a one bedroom apartment in Barrie has gone over the past five years from around say a thousand dollars or less to easily fifteen hundred dollars uh, a month. Yeah, That's Mike, a fifty let's, percent let's... increase, and I don't think any of those people received a fifty percent pay increase in that time. So people are losing. Absolutely ground. not. So there were some solutions that were proposed uh, both provincially <clears> and to <throat> council uh, that council has considered. Let's go to break real quick, and when we come back, let's explore that because I think that in itself is a fascinating topic. So stay with us here on Rogers TV for more of Hitting Home with Mike and Ark. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and Ark, and it is the rant edition of Hitting Home. Mike, we're talking <laughs> about housing affordability setting a clear delineation between affordable home ownership and, uh, and and housing affordability in the rental accommodation market. And if, if I was going to put a bow on this episode, it's really going to be, hey, people who make the rules, you either mean it or you don't. Let's get into the topic of second suites, Mike, because obviously yes. they've been making headlines over the summer and even you know beyond that. Well, there's, there's, there's two important elements to that. One is, given the high price of homes, um, that is the only option for growing numbers, uh, especially young people buying their first home. Um, without that income uh, coming in each month from a second suite in the home, um, they're not going to be able to afford that home. So more and more people, more people coming to me, that's the first thing out of their mouth. When they, they're a buyer, they're, they're saying, find us something that either is set up with a second suite or has that potential. It has the access and egress and the bones of the, the building in order to create that second Qualify suite. Qualify that a little it's, bit, Mike. Let's talk about that because there are people who are thinking and being told by financial advisors, et cetera, mortgage agents, brokers, bankers, you name it. Yeah. The the only way you're going to afford a home is if it has a second suite, whether that's yeah. a separate basement apartment or it's a split with a separate entrance or it's a separate in-law suite. You can get into home ownership, but you're going to need some supplemental income to help offset your mortgage. That's a reality, right? So that these are people who are saying, I could buy a home if. Yeah, and, here, and, and here's another scenario. You tell me which would be a healthier environment. Um, 50, um, affordable, like some of the most affordable rental is second suite. You know, there's, there's no denying it. That purpose built rentals are $1,500 and up over 2000 a month. Um, if you want to get in under that price, you're looking at second suites. So tell me this, which is better for Barry having, uh, 50 individuals who, who need rentals, who have low, low income, uh, having them dispersed throughout the city in second suites or taking 50 of them and sticking them in a converted hotel uh, on a main street and, and creating, uh, I, I don't even want to put a label on it, but create an environment that's susceptible to a lot of negative social things. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the path we seem to be taking because it's quick and it's easy, but I think we need to be making second suites more accessible, more affordable, but here we have within the past year, we had one of our city councillors in the East End Barry uh, push through a bylaw stating that if uh, you're a, a landlord who owns a home with uh, a second suite in it, you need to apply to the city for a special business license in order to continue with that. In applying for that, you're probably going to have your home totally reassessed and, and, and looked at by uh, 
And so I think many of those landlords are going to go, I'm out of this. I'm just selling. I'm getting out of here. So that effectively decreased the rental supply. And now most recently we see with, I think they're calling them tiny homes, but they're basically standalone second suites. You can build if your property is of a certain size. Coming to city council tonight, this is Monday night, um, they're gonna try and pass a, uh, a bylaw change that will see that the setback is increased from, I think it's three feet to nine feet. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, for one of these suites. So basically what the city is doing is they're responding to the people say, I don't want those in my neighborhood. Uh, so instead of the city just coming forward and, and having the whatever it takes to just say, no, we're not going to do these, um, they, 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 they do it in an underhanded way. They, they tweak the, yeah, the zone that effectively can't be built. Yeah, they got it. They got to decide, right? They, at at yeah. some point, they got to decide. You either want it or you don't. I can put that on a loop for the entire show. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think about it, what makes more sense? It's going to take three years to build purpose-built rentals, by the and if not ten, by the time you get your application for rezoning, by the time you get your site plan approval, by the time you actually put the shovels in the ground and you raise a uh, hundred million dollars to build this multi-unit building or whatever, however many millions it's going to take, depending on the size and scale, yes. obviously. Uh, in, in the meantime, you could have a bunch of people uh, uh, assisting the market. And yes. as you said, instead of creating ghettos or instead of creating vacuums of people who are at risk of being stereotyped for one thing or another, yes. We could all live in harmony within the neighborhoods, yeah. but you can build a second suite within 16 weeks. You can build a whole house oh, within, yeah. six, within we, 16 weeks. We know that. That's yeah. a fact. That's not my opinion. You can build it we within 16 weeks. We have the existing housing inventory in this city Add to accommodate to everybody. It. We Add have to it, Mike. You're going to have to have property rent, rent uh, managers. You're going to have to have yeah. uh, a whole bunch of admin to run these large buildings. If you want to talk about uh, waste or if you want to talk about access to affordable housing, you got to stick a whole bunch of people on and a maintenance crew yeah. and elevators uh, maintenance and all of these different things to have a multi unit. There are heavier carrying costs than no, people I know. being able to put it's, existing it's, rentals within the within the community. But the to the point the of your setbacks, there. Mike. To the point of yeah. your setbacks, that is absolutely ridiculous. You look at the homes that have been built in the last decade plus in this city or any other mm -hmm. city, and you've got homes that are property line to property line with barely two feet to walk in between. You can't even fit an air conditioner yeah. in between the houses. And you're now telling me that these conveniently, these second suites are going to have to have a three meter setback from the property yeah. line. You're going to have houses sitting at the second suite sitting in the middle of properties because the actual main house sits out farther to the yep. property line. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. So this is There's one an of the ulterior motive things that I've ever sure. heard of. It is an ulterior motive, and they're catering they're catering to the people who are making noise instead of doing the you know paying attention yeah. to the task at hand. Yeah, and I just I you know to sum up, I started to say is that uh, we do have the existing square footage already. It, it's built, it's there within this city to accommodate everybody. If we would only support uh, and enable more people to create those second suites, to maintain those second suites, there's our answer right there. We're not gonna see the purpose-built uh, rental housing, certainly not to the degree that we need. We need to the city, the province, the federal government needs to get behind. There needs to be incentives for people to do this. We need to accommodate the people who that's the only way they're ever going to be able to own is if they have a second suite. And Instead Mike, of many, putting up roadblocks and creating these stupid things like the Seast End Council. For many uh, people, these yeah, are going to be... That's totally counterproductive. Yeah, for many people, these are going to be your parents or in-laws anyway. For many people, they're going to be the children or friends of. And for anybody who's saying it's just an opportunity for the greedy to get greedier, I think that that's out to lunch. If you create well, the additional supply, if you create the additional supply, then anybody yeah. living in a scenario where they're not enjoying, where they feel they're paying too much, will have the flexibility and the yeah. ability to look elsewhere, forcing the rents to come down. Mike, yeah. we are absolutely out of time. Mm -hmm. We have to go. But I think that this was fun. It was great. Yeah, it might uh, be a bit of a, a bit of attitude towards some of our elected officials, but I truly believe that. Well, they need not to, the uh, officials in particular, but I just yeah. would like all of them to step back and, and think about their motives. We're out of time. This was fun. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again on Hitting Home with Mike and Arf on Rogers TV. Barry.